Matt, you talked the other day about needing more grit at both ends of the floor. How did Grady Eifert play into that tonight? Yeah, he's um, you know does a lot of little things. Uh, obviously, he made a, a big three there late in the game. Um, but you know, just uh, his ability to switch ball screens, you know, know what's going on, um, have a feel, um, you know, for what we want to do and what we're trying to do from an offensive standpoint. Like he came up big tonight for us. Just the, the 22 to one run, I think it was in the first half. What yeah. changed there that um, you're yeah, well, able to take control of the game? We with? started passing it to ourselves instead of Ohio State. So had a lot of turnovers in that first six, seven minutes, just poor decisions and forced threes. And um, everybody came out and took a bad three to start the game. And we turned the basketball over and just started sharing the basketball. We generated some offense off our defense. Um, but it was nothing more than just executing and, and passing to the open man and knocking down some shots. Um, you know, we, we should have been in a better situation going into halftime than we were. Obviously, we turned the basketball over and um, they get a breakaway layup, they get fouled, they don't make it. And then we turn the ball over again and they, uh, you know, hit a half quarter. Um, so, you know, we, we should have had anywhere from 15 to 18 and a half. Instead, we're at 10. And now they, you know, they shoot the ball well in the second half and make a lot of threes. And uh, had a really good stretch, and uh, made it a game. You know, their their ability to close it, close out the half the way they did, um, really put them in a better position. But we, I think, we allowed that also. What concerned you about Ohio State coming in? It seemed like you were able to limit Caleb West in somewhat, yeah. but they got some contributions from some guys that yeah. haven't much this well, season. Yeah, it's kind of twofold. You know, we've had a lot of big guys at our place, and so you kind of go back and forth. But obviously, um, he didn't get a good whistle tonight. And, um, you know, you could say we were fortunate for that, but um, we couldn't stop them there in the second half. When they went small and made all those shots, you know, we were in a tough spot. And um, I thought our defense at time was pretty good. And other times, you know, we just kind of let them triple threat us and, and shoot right on us. But um, Caleb Wesson's a really good player. And, um, you know, we, just, we were just trying to double him whenever he got the basketball. And we knew if we didn't get a good quick double, he was a good passer also, and he could find people. So we just wanted to try to get him. Um, out of rhythm, not let him get going, and uh, we were fortunate. You know, he you know he got a couple tough calls. Did you see anything from I guess an intangible standpoint from your team in terms of them being able to withstand that run in the second half where Ohio State's making every yeah. shot? Yeah, sure. Anytime you know teams are able to make those shots, and you know you're having a tough time um, making decisions on your own. You know, being able to you know make free throws, make a couple you know timely threes and um, get some stops. You know, we, we had a lot of stops in the last five minutes of the game, but we didn't have a lot of stops in the first 15 minutes of the second half. Um, Coach, what's your biggest takeaway from the game, and what is something you think you guys can improve on the most going forward in Big yeah. Ten play? Well, we had the, in conference play, we had the fewest amount of turnovers in conference play coming in here, and we turned the basketball over a lot. So I would say that, and I would say being able to execute on offense and get quality shots, you know, and not turn the basketball over. So, but anytime you can win a road game, we haven't had a lot of success, you know, in Columbus. And uh, this is a tough place to play, and they've obviously had a great program for a long time. So uh, this was a big win for us. It was the 0 for 7 start, and I think almost all those were jump shots, and then, and then obviously all the turnovers. Did you see all that kind of playing in together in terms of a, an offensive approach that was off tonight? Or? No, just guys taking bad shots and throwing the ball to the other team. You got to ask them that, you know. And so I, it's it's the one thing it's a it's a downside of freedom, you know, you know you get you get freedom to make decisions and make plays, and then if you know you just want to take quick shots and you're going to be on the road, you're going to get beat. You know we were very lucky they didn't play well to start the game. Very lucky. You know we could have easily been down 10 to 15 points right off the bat, and then had to battle the rest of the game. So we were fortunate that they turned the ball over too. You've had ups and downs in the Big Ten over your career. Ohio State's going through a tough spell right now. What, mm. in your experience, what does it take to get out of something like, like a, a significant losing streak in the conference, especially in a year when the league's as tough yeah. as it is? Um, you know, it's hard. It's 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 difficult because I think each game something different will pop up when you're going through tough times. You know, like all of a sudden, like the next game, you don't turn the ball over, and then you don't rebound. Then the next game, you'll rebound, then you turn the basketball over. You know, and then you shore up both of them and you don't make your free throws. And so it just feels like there's always something else. It's just kind of collectively, you know, coming together as a team and just finding a way. Because right as you can get a win, now you can build off of that. And now you can gain some confidence, especially with young guys. Because when young guys struggle versus older guys, you know, it's a little bit different. You know, it's a little bit different because they play through their scoring more. They play through their shooting. 
and things of that nature. You know, you just you got to be able to play. It's it, you know we've been in that situation before. We've had good big guys that have been such a huge part of what we do. And then when they leave the game and they get bad calls, it's frustrating because that's such a big piece of what you do, and it, it's it, it's really hard to do. You mentioned sharing the basketball earlier. Obviously, it seemed like you, when you did do that well, you got to score from this. Moment. Yeah, so, it's a hell of a concept. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, my question is, was how important was it that the guys had the opportunity? Yeah, like when you know we've we've had such success and such failure, and then just on the same topic, and it comes and goes with us. That's what's frustrating, I think for guys on our team and myself and our coaches is that like, you know, you want guys to be aggressive. You want them uh, to be out there looking um, for their opportunities. But when they're not there, you got to move the basketball and you got to move your body and you got to, you know, you got to probe the defense. And um, I always talk about, you know, a good offense is patiently aggressive. You know, if they're going to give us stuff, we're going to take it. But if they're not, then we're going to be patient and move the basketball. But it doesn't mean we're methodical and it doesn't mean we're deliberate. You know, it, you know, you got to cut hard, and you got to open things up for other people because you're cutting hard and set legal screens, and um, you know we're just beating ourselves at times tonight. But then once we would kind of get into a three to four minute stretch, we'd be really good, and then we kind of go, we revert back. So obviously we had more positives than negatives, and we we're fortunate to win. It can probably get lost in the outcome, but you got a couple of big shots during the first half run from Eric Hunter. Just yeah. where do you kind of feel like he is right now from his comfort and confidence? Yeah. Well, that's great. It's great for him. It's hard. And I, I, talk, I always tell you guys, it's hard to be consistent when you don't get consistent minutes. You know, we all want someone to be consistent. And they play 10 to 15 minutes, and that's, it's really hard to do. Um, so one thing he's going to do for us, he's going to score. He just is. He, he might not right now um, because he only gets about 10 to 12 minutes a game. Um, but it was good to see him get to the basket, make a play, and then make that three. And uh, you know, hopefully, we can just keep building on it and, and be confident. Matt Harms hadn't been to the free throw line in I think three games, and now he goes five for five. Is it still an area where you think he can have a big contribution as far as drawing that kind of presence? You'd like out? to think so. You know, I, I, you know, him making that baseline jump shot, you know, it's probably good for his confidence, and then, you know, just being um, confident at the line and you know, sticking with his routine and knocking down his free throws. Thank you.